YouTube. Okay, there we go. Okay, hello everybody and welcome back to Reader's Warehouse Recommends. Um, I'm Thomas from Reader's Warehouse and we are live every Monday at 12 o'clock with new book recommendations. And um, today we are talking about children's books um, and then we alternate each week doing children or adults books. If you're new to us doing this, um, how it's going to work is we're going to be doing three rounds of book recommendations and in each round one of these wonderful people who have joined me today is going to share a title with us. And joining me today, we have Emma Copley from Scholastic. We have Bruce Gallow from John the Ball Publishers. We have um, Carol um, Broomhall from Jakarta Media. We have um, Suzanne, Suzanne, Suzanne Raspel from Blue Weaver Sales and Marketing. Um, we have Marianne Fulyun from Penguin Random House with her two um, friends. Um, and we have uh, Mahkaleen and Sneeman from Family Bullets Africa. So um, thank you all for joining us today. Um, we haven't done an order to start, but I think we can always go with uh, Marianne first, then uh, Mahkaleen, then Carol, then um, Emma, then Mariska, and then Susan. Um, so Marianne, if you would like to go with your um, first title. Thanks, Thomas. I'll share my screen. Very excited to start off with the Jamie Oliver novel first. Tell me if you can see it. Yep, we can. So this released, uh, was it last week, I think? Um, very, very excited to see this title come out. It is um, uh, Jamie's first novel that he's written for um, for children. Of course, he's got a lot of children of his own, so he's he's got a full, full audience there already, which is great. And uh, we're looking at uh, Billy and his friends. Um, I've got some spreads here. They know they're not supposed to go into the woods because there's strange things that seem to be happening there. And they come across some sprites uh, who need their help. And that's when the adventure starts. Um, you can see there's a, this was one, an early spread as I don't have an actual copy with me, but beautifully illustrated. Um, these are his four best friends or Billy himself, who's 10, he's obsessed with gadgets got a great big heart, he's full of excitement, and they always go on all these wonderful adventures. And is the only girl in the group. She's very independent, um, and she's not afraid to get stuck into any adventure. Excuse me for one second. Hey, not now, stop, they're playing, sorry. Um, <laughs> and we have Jimmy, Jimmy's obsessed with nature. He's got the kindest heart, and he's always there for his friend there's nothing he wouldn't do for them he of course don't underestimate Andy because he's smarter than you think and uh, he comes up with these shiny pearls of wisdom when you think that nothing is possible the book also has some really sweet recipes so I think it's got grandpa's oats and Billy's favorite bolognese so very very cool and beautifully is illustrated as I say yeah, it's nice to see how this does. And the illustrations remind me very much like um, Crescendo Cow, like the How to Train Your Dragon author's books. You know, it has that magical feel. So I think it's just very much for a similar like readership, I think. Absolutely. We're hoping for good things with this. Perfect. Great. Wonderful. Thanks, Marianne, for I'll your stop sharing. Time. Sorry, Mark. Okay. There I can unshare for you. There you go. There you go. Okay. And Magdalene, over to you for your first title. Um, okay. So my first one is called Remarkable Me. Um, this is by Tuanelo Serumola and um, illustrated by Sui Bosa. And we're super excited for this. It's a book of positive affirmations for little boys. It's the follow up to Wonderfully Made. Um, and this is just a lovely book to read with your little boy um, before he goes to sleep or even first thing in the morning to start the day on a positive note. Um, the importance of positive affirmations for young children and the usefulness of that has been proven um, time and time again. And this book, um, it challenges stereotypes um, of masculinity, but in a very gentle way. So you'll find boys in this book expressing their emotions and being caring, being nurturing, um, but also having a lot of fun and trying to make the world a better place. Um, yeah, so this is a great one for, I'd say, ages Three plus. Okay, wonderful. I'm, I'm so glad they did a second book in this. And the, 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 the duo is so fantastic. The author and the illustrator yeah. is just fantastic. So, yeah. Yeah. And these also make great gifts. Um, and also, you've got them in a few different languages as well. I know. Yes. Well. So, uh, five languages. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Mathleen. Um, okay, Carol, over to you for your first title. 
Okay, I'm going to start with um, Girls Don't Do That by Tembi Katlana and Nick Kirkinis. Um, I'm not sure if you all know our beloved Tembi Katlana, but she is one of our most celebrated Banyana Banyana players. Um, I think, sure, I mean, she's, she's now um, playing for Racing Louisville in the US. And um, this is her story. Um, and it's very a courageous, inspiring book. It tells um, of her humble beginnings. Can you see the cover? Of yeah. um, in, in the streets of Mokhla King. And she always had the talent and the dream to play soccer. But she was told by many of her peers and, and others that girls don't do that. Girls don't play soccer. And um, through her own hard work, her determination and her bravery, she eventually overcomes everything to play for Banyana Banyana and was named greatest player on the African continent. Um, it is um, targeted, I'm just gonna show you a couple of spreads. It's targeted at sort of six to 10 year olds. Um, and it is available in English, Afrikaans, Kosa Zulu and Setswana. Um, and the illustrations have been done by Chantal and Bergen Thorne. I mean, they are just so beautiful. This is the page where, where the girls say to her, you know, girls don't do that. And she imagines that they're these cackling hyenas in the background. Um, so, yeah, just a, a really, really super story. I think that will appeal to boys and girls alike um, because she's always supported by her cousins and family. And, yeah, so that's called Girls Don't Do That. Perfect, wonderful. Looks, the illustrations look fantastic. I think that's a really inspiring story for young children to read. So they yeah, are wonderful. Yeah, and 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 we don't have a lot in this in this sort of middle grade space for sort of a first reader for South African kids that have you know stories from South Africa. So yeah, that was one of the reasons for doing this. Perfect. Book. Thanks, Carol. Thank you so Thank much you. for this title. All right, Emma, over to you for your first title. So for my first title, I'm going to talk about the huge, huge book that is from Brian Selznick. As many of you know, he's a, an award-winning author. He's had lots of accolades all over the world. You know, he's uh, had lots of films adapted in, uh, lots of books adapted into films. Um, and this was a little bit different because the original idea came from Steven Spielberg and the uh, film studio Illumination Entertainment. So this is kind of a backwards one. Um, I think it's probably going to be done the right way as we probably all prefer the book to the film. Um, but it has the potential to be made into a film. So there's that that comes along with this one as well. So this is an epic adventure. Um, one of his biggest books to date for us. It's um, about two seeds, Louise and Merwin. They're sycamore seeds and they've always dreamed of becoming big trees. Um, but a, a fire has forced them to leave their, their mama tree early and they have to find a safe place to grow up. Um, so it's a sort of a younger demographic. It's sort of seven plus. Um, but I think this would be great to read as a family because it's just so massive. It's just so it's really far reaching and imaginative as as all Brian Sotznik titles are. Um, we're really, I'm just really excited for this one. I, I can't wait to read it. I've got my hands on a copy um, only recently, so I'm, but I'm really looking forward to it. We've got some big push behind this from, like I say, Steven Spielberg um, and Illumination. So yeah, really excited. Yeah, and, and, and his books, like I said, there's like 300 illustrations. Some of the pages are just double spreads and he does this amazing like pencil illustration drawings. It's absolutely black and white, They're absolutely amazing. Yeah, definitely. Okay, thanks so much, Emma. All right, so Suzanne, it's over to you for your first title. Oh, sorry, are you referring to me, Thomas? Yeah. <laughs> okay, got it. So thanks so much. Um, I'm quickly going to share my screen. Yeah. Thanks. There we go. Okay, so my first recommendation this morning is going to be the new edition of Francie's Bird Book. 
So this is the very popular bird watching guide for children. Um, but it's one of those books that while it's targeted at younger readers, it could definitely appeal to the whole family. Um, it has so many beautiful color illustrations and it can help you identify every single bird in South Africa very easily. So it's good for beginners. Um, bird watching is something great to take with you on holiday. Um, and in this new edition, we also have more bird species from four new countries. Um, that is Namibia, Botswana, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. So all our neighbors. And there's also 120 extra bird species. So definitely jam-packed with interesting information. Um, yeah, we believe it will make a beautiful gift um, for Father's Day upcoming or for anybody in your family who loves the outdoors. Um, and in this new edition, there are also QR codes um, scattered throughout that you can scan. And it will show you a picture um, of the bird as well as the bird sound. So it can help you identify whatever bird comes across your way much easier. Um, yeah, and it comes in a beautiful soft cover format with a plastic jacket. So it is ready to take with you um, into nature wherever you go. So yeah, we're very excited about this one. Yeah, it's exciting. It's great that it's, it's so child friendly and I didn't realize mm -hmm. the first one was like that as well. So I was really excited when you first showed me this title. I'm so glad there's a, a new version coming out. Yes, yeah, we'll also have big hopes for this one and we hope everybody will love it. Perfect, thanks so much. Okay, so now we're on to Varushka. Let me share my screen for you. Um, all right, let's go. Okay. Yeah, I thought I would just do a sort of teen YA reads today. Okay. So first up, uh, I have uh, Becky Albertelli, who we all know from Simon versus the Homo Sapiens, which was turned into a movie called Love, Simon. Um, and so that book, the uh, Simon book, really sparked a, a lot of controversy for Becky Albertelli because people were saying, you know, um, who are you to write uh, someone else's story? And so over time, um, there was a lot of talk on all social media platforms about uh, Becky Albertelli's sort of own um, gender and uh, sexuality. And she, I think it's about three years or so, four years ago, she kind of went public and said um, that she's bi, and this is kind of her, her story, um, that she's now written into a story. She says Imogen is kind of her, it's kind of her. Um, it's a girl who grew up, who grows up believing she's the ultimate ally. She's got lots of uh, like her best friend is gay. You know, there's nothing she doesn't know. She's got pride out for, for all the festivals. Um, she's there, and then slowly but surely she realizes that she has feelings for someone, but she sort of thinks, how could this be? Because this is not who I am. Um, and it's what uh, in a time when um, gender and sexuality gets discussed so much. I think it's quite a it's quite a great book to read to see, hey, we all figure ourselves out at our own time, you know. So for some people it happens very late in life. For others, uh, they figure out who they are very, very early on. We all grow up with different um, environments and backgrounds. Um, she's a great writer I've read. Um, you'll see there I put down two of her other books that she's co-written with other people. I've read a lot of her stuff and she just has a very uh, sort of soft and gentle voice, never preachy um, and you kind of get, just get sucked into her world. So I'd say for anybody, for anybody who wants to sort of read a little bit wider than what they might normally read, um, this is quite a good read. Yeah, and then she definitely has a, a good fan base, a lot of people who read her books and really enjoy them. And the most definitely. of them are set like in high school settings, I think, or like in the teenage, yes. like, yeah. Yeah, so that you know, not um, yeah, I'd say teen, teen more than YA probably. Okay, perfect, wonderful. Thanks very much, Rishka, for that. Okay, that was the end of round one. So we're going to do round two. So Marianne, over to you for your second title. Thank you. Let me open it again. So next we've got. I can't remember which one it is next. Oh, oh yes, Straight Expectations. And this is also wonderful, wonderful, wonderful novel. So we've got Max. Max is seventeen. He, in many ways, is, has quite a, he leads quite a privileged life. He's gay, he's proud, he's got supportive parents, he's got two fantastic friends. Dean is also gay, he's an amazing performer, um, and he's been great support for Max over the years. 
And then Alicia, who's his straight friend, she's an, an, an artist and um, a great ally to the queer community in his school. But also you find that he's struggling with things that he hasn't got um, at the beginning of the novel. So one is a romantic relationship. It seems that his school is lacking in that, in that department for him and the limited opportunities to find uh, a, a partner when you're a gay boy in his school. So, and he happens to have a, a crush on this boy called Oliver Cheng, who kind of disses him when he invites him out for a date. So Max and his best friend, Dean, one day are joking about what they would wish for if they, um, if a wish came from a genie. And of course, they, the normal options come up like world peace and riches. And he thinks perhaps it would be nice to have unlimited handsome men to date. But what he wishes for instead is to blend in like all the other kids at school. Of course, he wakes up the next morning and he's no longer gay. Um, he's, he, he's no longer gay. He's dating his friend, Alicia. And unfortunately, Dean is not even in his life anymore. So uh, quite a nice take on him having been forced to look at who he is, uh, what's really important, and if he's going to find his way back to the friendship and maybe if he's lucky, even some romance. I do love the cover. And... Uh, I think a nice one to add to that collection. Yeah, it's, it sounds like something perfect for like a Netflix film or something like that one Absolutely. day. Absolutely, most definitely. Okay, yeah. perfect. Great, thanks so much for that title, Marianne. Okay, um, Magdalene, over to you for your second title. Okay, so my second four titles. <laughs> um, so we all know the Crook and Dull reading series. We've got level one, two, and three available in Afrikaans. And then there's uh, Croc and Pickle level one for English beginner readers. And so these are some additional books for parents and teachers that are struggling to find a way to keep the, the kids busy, um, maybe now during the school holidays or in the classroom. These are some really fun um, activities. And we've got, so for, kids who are just starting out reading we've got the alphabet book um, and this one goes through the letters of the alphabet and um, kind of has words that use these letters but also full color illustrations um, very funny and silly little pieces of text um, to encourage kids to read so this one is also great for second language Afrikaans speakers uh, then we have the red rhyme book uh, this one is really fun. It's all about rhyming words, rhyming sounds. Um, great for reading aloud in the classroom or teaching kids how to make their own rhymes. Then, of course, kids love jokes. So we've got the green joke book and um, it's also fully illustrated, full color. And then this one is my personal favorite, the word search. So this should keep kids entertained for quite a while during the holidays. And then obviously, um, what's also great about the Crocodile and Croc and Pickle series is that you can just scan the QR code at the back and get access to a bunch of other activities and pictures to color in and um, yeah, just loads of fun. If you don't know Croc and Dole, these are the perfect ones maybe to, to, to buy and see, you know, what, if you're yeah. young, you like them as well. Yeah, they're a good introduction. They obviously... I didn't even mention this because everyone knows they're by Jaku Jakobs, um, who's great at writing humor. And they are illustrated by Nadia Duplessis. Um, and you can see her beautiful illustrations on the covers and obviously inside. Perfect, wonderful. Thanks so much, Magdalene. All right, um, Carol, over to you for your second title. Thanks, Thomas. I am going to talk about our um, new picture book, which is literally just hot off the press, arriving in bookstores, and it's called Nala Sings, um, illustrations by Subi Bosa, um, and um, written by Nonikiwe Mashalogu. Um, yeah, Subi, I know, I'm sure that you're all coming to know Subi. He's one of our um, prolific South African illustrators. And just to show you a few spreads, um, inside the book. I mean, there's your, your ogre. Um, singing was one of Nala's favorite things to do, um, but she's not allowed to go to the river because the giant ogre has been spotted there. And one day Nala decides to take a chance and go to the river alone. 
will she land up meeting Ladimo, the ogre? And if so, what happens with um, the little girl and the ogre? I'm not going to spoil the story by telling you the, the ending. Um, so this is a reimagined folk tale, um, which I'm sure you've all heard of, Solani and the Giant. Um, and it's about a spirited little girl who is filled, and it's, it really is filled with the beauty of nature. And that's been one of my bugbears, is that our children are so busy on their phones and their iPads that they're not getting into nature. And for me, the story was really important because I want kids to take their shoes off and go and play outside and just connect with, with nature. It's available in English, Afrikaans, causes Zulu, Sasutu and Setswana. And yeah, we just, uh, a, a lovely bedtime story for kids. Perfect, wonderful. And, and, and it's supposed to be like a moral in the story as well at the end as well. Um, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Perfect, thanks, Carol. Okay, Emma, over to you for your second title. So I'm going to bring you one from one of my favourite authors on our list. Um, this is from Vicky McClure and Kim Curran. Um, Vicky McClure is an actress in the UK. She's been in a lot of um, police dramas. Um, she's absolutely brilliant. But more recently, she's been known for her work campaigning to support those with dementia. She has family members who suffer from dementia. Um, and she also created a choir to uh, raise money and awareness. Um, and she really is passionate about bringing that knowledge to the younger generation because I don't think it's discussed very often and it is something that kids can come into contact with with grandparents um especially when, as with living longer so I think she's she's really loves that idea of the music therapy and, and helping to kids understand how dementia affects our families and uh, you know so so she's she's brought that in in this book um, so Jace is 10 and he's spending the summer holidays at Castle Rock Caravan Park with his auntie and grandma who has dementia. Um, he thinks he's going to be really, really bored, but he ends up meeting um, a couple of other kids from around the park. Um, and they start to get accused of carrying out thefts around the park and they want to clear their names. So it's a really warm hearted um, mystery where they're all investigating together and working together um, to find out who who it is that is actually doing these thefts so um it's very sweet it's cozy crime you know sort of like Richard Osman but for kids um sort of eight plus I would say um and yeah it's it's written with a lot of heart and a lot of warmth um and that introduction to dementia and and kids having to deal with that aspect um of a family member so um yeah, that came out uh, last last month. That came out. Yeah, so um, we're, we're we're really excited to be working with Vicky McClure on on this, and hopefully the first book in in of many from her. Uh, when I was looking at it, it reminds me very much of something like if you were an adult reading like you know Blighton books. You know, I mean, like the more like modern version of that, something like that for children. Yeah, today. yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, wonderful. Thanks so much, Emma. Okay, um, so now it's over to you for your second title. Hey, thanks so much, Thomas. So next we have a very fun Afrikaans reader, Die Bonsmara Sahara, from Rock of the Books. So in English, that would be the Bonsmara's hair. And in this story, we follow um, a family on a farm in the Free State, and they are going through a bit of a tough time. They are experiencing a drought, which I think we can all relate to. Um, and then on their farm, they discover one of the Bonsmara bulls has beautiful, long, golden hair. And this eventually leads them um, to overcome this difficult time and get through the drought. So it's a very fun story, all written in rhyme, um, about a family coming together, about a community coming together, and a bit of a bit of magic as well with this very unique and special Bon Smara Bull. So it's definitely a very fun book that the family can get together over, um, laugh a little bit, and just and play with the imagination again. So yeah, we are very excited about this one. Um, from a local author, um, her debut book, and yeah, we're very excited to see what she's gonna come out with next as well. Um, also beautifully illustrated. Here we can see some more of the Bonsmara's beautiful golden curls. And also some, yeah, some also beautifully illustrated. So yeah, we are excited about this one. 
Perfect. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that. Okay, um, Bruska, it's over to you for your second title. Let me share my screen quickly for you. And then there we go. Um, catfish rolling. Is it? Uh, I'll unmute yourself, um, Bruska. I see. You. Sorry. There we go. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I love I love the cover. Um, we all know that mythology is doing extremely well at the moment. It sells well, and so this is Japanese mythology, but also set in magical realism. Um, the legend is that under Japan is a massive catfish, and if the catfish rolls over, that's when the seas rise and a tsunami happens. And so this is set around the 2011 tsunami, um, which I think we can also remember. It was over Christmas. Um, we, you know, I remember uh, we had a friend that we couldn't find uh, for a few days, and you know, until we knew she was safe. So it, you know, the, it impacts many of us around the world. And so this is a story of Sona. Her, her dad is a scientist, and the tsunami destroys their house, and her mother disappears. You know, her mother she, they, is, is gone, um, and she walks around very angry um, because why did the catfish let this happen? And her dad realizes that they are that now after the tsunami, there are these spaces sort of at the edge of time and um, time in a sense of of where we're at, like there's a thinning in the veil, as they would say. And so her dad kind of starts investigating, and then one day he also dis he disappears. And so she kind of has nothing left to lose but to go look for the catfish, because she obviously has a fight to pick with the catfish. Um, Beautifully told. Um, Sona is a great character. Author is, I think, I, I want to say she's Canadian, Irish, Japanese. So lots of different influences in her writing. Um, yeah, and I think this is the kind of book. I mean, it is. A, it is. But if you're an adult and you want to pick it up and read it, you can also read it. You know, the writing is really good. And then, well, what what age group would that be for? Do you think like it would be a good age? Is that like for a Korean fan? Like, is it like a nine plus or ten plus or older? No, 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 no. I'd say I'd say at least twelve plus. 12 plus. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. I'd say twelve to twelve till infinity. You know. Well, yeah. I think it's a it's also a beautiful book about loss and how we deal with loss, how hard it is to accept things sometimes. You know, it's a process. Okay, wonderful. Thanks very much, Briscoe. Okay, so we're on to the final round. So, Marianne, sure. over to you for your um, final title. Thank you. I've got a bit of fun next. Another puzzle from Osborne. I do love the Osborne puzzles. This value I've added to the puzzles, um, 49 pieces, which is great. So, the kids that have master the 25 pieces but i'm quite ready to do a hundred did we lose marianne there let's just wait to see if she comes back Oh, I think we've lost Tom. Yeah, I'm back now. Sorry about oh, that. Okay. Yeah. No, your slide is finished. Yeah, I, I, the, the, those the, those puzzles do so well, and it's so fantastic that they come with the book as well. So the children get to um, learn so much, um, you know, while they or after they built the puzzle about the different animals. Absolutely. And for those um, parents who've got kids in grade seven this year, I know in this term the the periodic table comes up. And we have a lovely 300 piece periodic table as well that comes with it. I found that booklet so fun and informative. It makes it such a fun way to learn about those elements. That's, That's interesting. So nice I've actually book. noticed I saw that recently and I was wondering why. Maybe it's because of that. Yeah, because my Emma, who's in grade seven this year, this week as she came home with worksheets on the periodic table, I'm like, oh, we're going to bring out the puzzle again. Yeah, <laughs> learn yeah, all yeah. about them. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah. Thanks so much, Marianne. Okay, I'm Aftaline, over to you for your final book. Um, okay, so I have these two beautiful books um, by Jaku Jacobs. We've got um, Frot Eier, which is seven stinky stories. And 
Bully Beef, which is seven hilariously funny stories. And these are collections of short stories and they are perfect for um, reluctant readers, for boys, for I think for the classroom also, because they're short enough that you can use them for a comprehension test or you can include them in an exam um, or for reading aloud in class, but they are absolutely hilarious and um, filled with gross things, funny things, slimy things, stinky things, um, everything that children between the ages of nine and 12 love and parents don't like so much. Um, but yeah, these will really get kids who aren't into reading, into reading. Um, so yeah, there's two of these. There's actually four of these short story collections available. The other two came out last year, um, but these are the latest editions. And they have some black and white illustrations um, throughout. Yeah, and I think there's also be great for like um, Afrikaans as a second language, you know, to use. Yes, things like definitely. That. Yes, okay. definitely. And then what age would you say that would be for if you think for, for an Afrikaans first language? So for Afrikaans first language, I'd say um, 9 to 12, maybe even 13. Um, and then second language, I'd say 13, 14, around there. Okay. Um, yeah, because they, they are quite funny and silly and gross. Okay, wonderful. Perfect. Thanks so much, Marceline, for those. Okay, um, Emma, over to you for your um, third title. Oh, just share my screen. <clears throat> so this is the second title um, from Sabine Adienka. Um, it is about um, Jummy. So we had Jummy at the River School was the first title. Um, this is from Chicken House um, and it published last month. And this is the, the second title is that published last month. So um, Jummy and Caro are now finally attending their um, boarding school in 1990s Nigeria together. They're best friends and they both get to work on an agricultural project. Um, but the Shine Shine River that runs alongside the school is having some issues. So um, this is there's a lot in here about the environment. Um, so it's quite relevant, I think, in, in the classroom. Um, and it's got lovely messages of friendship. It's a mystery that they can work on together, a big group of friends that work together at the boarding school. Um, I think that Jummy is a really great character. You just can't help but like love her. She's just so passionate and funny and she's just she's just brilliant. I love her. So I, I'm, I've loved reading this one. I, I really enjoyed it. And I think any kids will as well. So this is nine plus. Yes, I hope the series keeps going. It is fantastic. And um, yeah, I think these are perfect also for school set works. If a school is looking for a set book book, these are like such a great series to give a go. Yeah, and, and different as well to be set in the like that 1990s and like the boarding school trope, but in Nigeria. So it's just a bit of a step away from maybe what we're used to. Um, but I, I just love it. It's brilliant. Perfect. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Emma, for that final title. OK, um, so, so now it's over to you for your um, final title. Hey, thanks, Thomas. So last up today, I have a very special book that should be a great resource for families. We have Harry Goes to Heaven. And this is based on the true story of a, uh, a boy and his dog um, called Harry who they grow up together, they meet, and they form this very special bond. But inevitably, Harry gets sick and old. And this is the story of how the boy's family helps him go get through that process. And that, that is what the author, Jackie, hopes to do with this book as well. She wanted to write something that would help children through the grieving process um, in a very gentle and supportive way. Um, this book has also been endorsed by a child psychologist, so that is very exciting. Um, and it's also very, very beautifully illustrated, and it should be a very good resource for families um, and to help children through a difficult time like this. But it's also a very hopeful story. Um, it's not just dark and dim. It's very hopeful, very gentle. Um, we have some very nice resources at the back about how to speak to your child about losing a pet um, and how to keep them in your memory. Um, so yeah, we hope this will be, a, um, we hope this will find its audience and help some families. Perfect, yeah, no, there's, there's always people looking for books like that where someone's lost like their pet hamster or, you know, a family pet. So um, yeah, it's great that there's a, a local title now that's come out for us for that. 
All right, so Sprush goes over to you for your final title. Let me just share the screen for you. Oh, there we go. Okay. Can you hear me, Thomas? I've had to move yeah. my car, so I'm struggling yeah. with the signal a bit. Okay, I know. I can hear you perfectly loud and clear. Okay, cool. So this is the conclusion. It's not the conclusion. It's the second book, sorry. Uh, confusion. Um, so Twin Crowns is one of those books that, you know, wasn't anything and then BookTok discovered it. Uh, and so it became big and famous. Uh, written by two very well-known um, authors in their own right. Um, Catherine Doyle writes a lot of great middle grade fantasy. Um, Catherine Web Weber, <clears throat> she's also like, in, you know, insider information. She's also one half of, as a, as a married person, she writes um, with her husband, Kevin T uh, Tang. They write the Sam Wu books and the Dragon Kingdom books. So um, this is this is her. So in the first story, we have two sisters who don't know the other exist. Um, and it's all, it's about the fight for who, who will reign. And now in the second book, of course, when you put two people in one space, there's bound to be, you know, uh, things they agree and disagree on. It's not such a straightforward and easy thing as you would think. Um, and so the battles isn't all necessarily always um, in the field. It's sometimes just at home and in the heart. Um, so I've got big hopes for the second book. I think the third one is next year. Yeah, I remember the first one coming out, that Twin Crown sold very, very well. So I'm sure there's a lot of people waiting for the sequel and it's great that they've come and, and the covers also look fantastic. Um, yes, no, they, it's good when it's continuation, you know? Yeah, okay. Well, thank you everyone for those um, titles, recommendations this week. I'm just going to quickly just share our top five best-selling children's books um, for the past two weeks at Reader's Warehouse. Um, just to quickly run through them. Um, so for the past two weeks, our fifth best selling book was this new um, Bear Girls title called You Versus the World, um, a nonfiction book for kids um, learning um, life lessons from Bear Girls. Um, number four is still the latest Dive Wimpy Kid title, um, Dipper Overload, the 17th book in the series. Um, number three is the latest Dogman title, um, 20,000 Fleas Under the Sea, um, book 11. From Dave Polky. Um, number two is a bluey title called Let's Stick. Um, we've definitely seen a lot more bluey fans out there, and this has been our second best selling title. Um, Let's Stick, Stick a Scene book from Bluey. And then number one, um, returning to number one, is the latest David Williams title, um, Robo Dog, um, who's the new standalone title. So that is it for this week. Thanks everybody for joining and watching. We hopefully you gave you some great choices for the school holidays coming up very soon. Some amazing local titles, some amazing international titles. Um, and we'll be back next uh, Monday with the live recommendations on adult titles. So until then, happy reading everybody. And thanks so much for watching and tuning in. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye.